yeah i understand it was a devastating uh, event which happened today and uh, it was a normal life running and we suddenly got to know it's a big big major blow. so first of all let's talk about mayday call mayday is a internationally recognized distress signal which is actually used in radio communication especially in aviation and maritime uh, area so it it always used in case of life threatening emergencies and when you need an immediate assistance so mayday is actually a french word which which means help me so we have a norm in radio telephony whenever there is a urgency and you know urgent uh, immediate assistance is required we always say mayday 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 three times so which means help me help me help me so it is recognized all over the world now when we you know on take off when we talk about you know carrying a uh, lot of fuel let's talk about fuel first so when we talk about as a pilot we enter we go we do our paperwork first so in our paperwork carrying how much fuel is required and how much is the diversionary requirement and how much is the contingency requirement that we calculate everything so carrying 586 liters you are saying 56000 liters fuel right so if i talk about the fee fuel figures so approximately the average uh, uh, time for the london flight from ahmedabad takes around uh, 9 to 10 hours and uh, the burn fuel which is required for per hour for boeing 787 uh, eight aircraft so this is around 5500 kg we talk about kg then we can convert it to liters because all the calculations are in kg when we go in the aircraft so suppose we take an average flight of 8.5 to 9 hours one hour it takes around 50 500 kg of fuel burn so almost 49000 kg of fuel is required to reach from ahmedabad to gatwick lander out of that then we add 5% of contingency fuel the trip fuel and then some diversionary fuel requirement in case there is no weather or some emergency happening at the landing airfield so suppose we take in this case uh, london heathrow okay so it takes around 3000 kg because we have to climb again and cruise and descend to that position then we also take 30 minutes of holding fuel which is in case of traffic or any any condition that is only for 30 minutes thereafter comes the uh, landing fuel etops fueling because it's a long long flight so etops is like extending uh, extended time operations when you are extending your time into the sea so you have extra fuel so that you can safely reach to you know uh, midway diversion in case in mid midway you have a fuel uh, engine failure or some other emergency you can divert to the nearest airfield on the way then we also cater for taxi fuel which we are using on the runway going from the stand to runway and we are using for apu fuel when the ac is running on the ground when boarding is happening and everything is happening so if you calculate and put it all together it actually requires 5600 kg of fuel or approximate idea so carrying that much fuel is normal for a flight every flight carries that much fuel and now the question is that whether it is it was overweight no it cannot be overweight because 787 you know the capacity of carrying the fuel in 787 is around 1 lakh 26000 kg of fuel liters of fuel my correction so this is a normal thing but obviously when it is taking off and it is full of fuel and when it collides with something it is a bomb it feels like a bomb it will blast so i think let's talk about uh, first how it could happen there are possibly many reasons when uh, you know it is very rare but it can happen so like maybe a flock of birds so flock of birds entered both the engines and ruptured it however jet engines are certified to withstand bird strikes but multiple or large bird impacts may cause failures particularly risky in the area with you know poor hazards of bird management near the airports and then uh, second reason could be fuel contamination or delivery issues contaminated fuel water mi- micro biological growth or something in the fuel which led to you know uh, engine failures or a flame out you can say that engine stopped working both the engine stopped working third possible reason could be a mechanical failure because these are old planes and maintenance i don't know how what kind of maintenance is happening but 
it can always happen poor maintenance because after all it's a machine metal can fatigue you know manufacturing defects or metal fatigue anything can happen so all these reasons could lead to both engine failure and this has happened earlier if you know if you uh, remember the sully thing it's a miracle on hudson uh, hudson uh, event so it was the same thing after take off clock of bird entered into both engines but in that case they were at 2800 of feet of height so at that split of second when he saw that he cannot turn back and he has very less margin of height to land now the airplane can glide without the engine power so he decided to glide on to the river and crash land to ditch the aircraft so he did it so well in that season that it could land safely because he had some height in hand now in this case the particular reason is 600 feet by 600 feet you are just you know focusing on take off path and in this case if you see the landing gear is still down so initially first thing is when you took off when you are off the ground you just put the landing gear up because when you see the positive weight and you put the lead gear up so maybe that engine failure just happened on the rotation and it distracted the captain and first officer both and they missed out because they were devastating and they missed out the call of putting the landing gear up and figuring out what happened because they lost the both engines and then in that particular reason it just climbed to 800 feet and if you see till touchdown till it hit the building the wings were level and everything was smoothly going down he he was not pulling up he was doing very good job so they were fighting but without power at 600 feet it is it is i'm i'm really sorry to say but we have no option so if if it would have happened on landing obviously he had a runway in front of him and he can just, just glide and crash land maybe on the runway that would be less devastating because now he is doing controlled landing but now at 600 feet there is nothing he could do so when when this uh, both the engines are spooling so it generates a thrust basically the power rotational power so which throws the air back through the exhaust so some of the power goes to exhaust some of the power goes to the engine to run the engine and some some of our bypass through the engines which provides the movement momentum to go ahead so that much the power generating the momentum ahead is counted as thrust you can say you just call it thrust so it is a basically mo- uh, front going motion which we the power which is generated in the front of the aircraft which takes the aircraft forward that's called thrust so when you moving ahead so the whole idea of you know flying the aircraft when you have a thrust vector that is the power factor which is taking you ahead so now over the wings the two kind of uh, surface are there one is curved surface one is flat surface so below the wind is passing both the surface right so wind below the surf, uh, surface of the wing is fast fast enough because it's flat now and above the surface it's curved so it's low so the pressure generated below the wing is higher than the pressure generated above the wing so that's how the aircraft lifts off because the pressure behind uh, below the wing is pushing the whole body up so that is there are three forces four forces thrust lift upwards weight which is acting downwards and drag which is the basically the big body of the aircraft which is actually resisting to the wind that is called drag so always we have thrust vector ahead lift vector above whatever thrust vector you have in head the power which is taking you ahead it it, it adds to the lift so when you lose that thrust and you have drag vector which is you know opposite exactly opposite so drag drag vector is pulling you down now if we don't have the thrust vector the lift vector goes down so the whole weight is coming down the drag vector and the weight vector is actually you know opposing you to go up and down material failure can happen anywhere and it can be electrical issue also the uh, the whole system is controlled by fedec which is a system in the full authority digital engine control which actually provides the fuel to the engines which calculates how much fuel is needed so it could be a software issue also because actually fedec system is a whole software issue it's computer so it is telling you how much fuel you need in this system that could also be the issue fuel pumps is a mechanical issue it can be also be the issue so and also there could be you know some uh, mechanical failure of the blades or bearings or 
you know manufacturing defects metal fatigue so there are there could be many issues but uh, actually we get to know when the report comes out now we can just speculate and uh, just think of it otherwise now right now we can't pinpoint what could be the issue there are many reasons overheating of oil system could also be issue oil starvation to the system the system just sees that could also be this issue or oil leak or the oil which is in the air, uh, engines that also can be leak so whatever i have heard or seen on the internet so what i have seen is that you know the, the passenger has jumped off the plane that's how he served, survived because he was sitting on emergency window it is actually very commendable that in that fraction of second he realized and he opened the emergency window and jumped uh, because at this point of time everybody is strapped up even the crew is strapped up till 3000 5000 feet when everything is safe nobody you know take out their uh, seat belts and nobody is expecting you know it is going to be crash if it is everybody is expecting then everybody is ready but kudos to this person who has actually applied his mind and opened the emergency window and jumped off but otherwise if we talk about the situation of, of you know which is the safest plane safest uh, space in the plane i think uh, near the wings it is the maximum impact because the fuel is just there and it is going to blast and the fire is going to come there first and i think tail i would say tail is the you know rear seats they generally break out the tail is broke break out when impact impacted into the ground or something then the tail breaks and it is easy you know the tails it's easy to sit behind i think it's the safest place to sit behind because when you're going to crash it is head on it is not from the back and in the middle you have fuel so i think the tail is the safest part if you sit behind it is it would be the safest but in this case so much fuel such a great great huge blast it's it's very difficult to survive this this what ever happened uh, i think boeing 787 was having 11 years of no accident uh, record and which broke today and sadly again it's boeing uh, i think it is very rare event because even if you go with the facts the air travel is the safest means till date but it is fatal whenever it happens it is fatal the survivors are very less it can be avoided obviously so how it can be avoided there are multiple things we have audit teams if the aircrafts are audited on time and you know certifications are checked and maintenance is happening properly because i have seen some videos which surfaced on uh, internet about some some traveler you know traveling the same plane made some videos that it is not working this is not working so i'm not sure i'm not nobody to comment on but i'm just talking which is a uh, you know available on social media which is not to be quoted as a fact but obviously reports will get to know but how it can be avoided see everything uh, as a pilot i would say everything comes on a pilot at the end because if he is alive then blame him if he is dead then obviously it's his fault which is which should not be the case and as a human as a nature we are not supposed to fly the god didn't made us you know to fly we are not birds so we are doing something against nature accidents are prone to happen it after all it's a machine but then we can it can be avoided you know with lot of uh, the training which is happening these days in the civil aviation the rules we have it's too much ask me i'm doing my training from last one year it is it is uh, you know it is completely detailed training so that that where we are doing good now the main factor which i also feel is you know the area around the airport should be sanitized because we have some now gujarat being the you no know, vegetarian state we can't say that you have, you have butcheries around the airport and there are birds around but birds is is the main reason when you you know when during the take off or landings at the lower levels you have that issue or you have that danger they infest because a flock of birds comes and you, you can't do anything about it 
how you can't just suddenly change the path and that's it and if it happens because of the material failure all malfunctions of the aircraft then we should have audits and the aircraft which are actually cleared or certified they should be flying otherwise it's a big loss to companies but it is not big loss you know than lives